Amen. Hallelujah. You may all be seated. Every, every center comes with their vibe. <laughs> I was in the midst of I said, who are those people? Who are those people? They're, no, no, no way. <laughs> then somebody proudly told me where I catch up before. I said, I, said, I understand now. All right then. Okay. All right, welcome this morning, our first morning session at... Wavbeck 2023. Amen. It's a, it's a full house already. <laughs> full house, man. All right. Amen. All right. We'll say that after. All right. So, our first speaker is a friend of a house. Uh, I, I refer to him as my. As my brother in ministry, is uh, uh, Wafbeck is a was called the West Africa Faith Believers Convention. So there is, and we as much as possible, and it takes a spiritual discipline. It takes discipline to stay with the vision that God has given to you, because even Kenneth Hagin, uh, when he was alive, said when they started camp meeting, God told him to the morning afternoon sessions, particularly the morning sessions, should be teachings on the word of faith. But you know, as time goes on, you can easily get distracted, and he said they got distracted, and that God had to come to talk to him and said, we said the morning sessions should be teachings on the word of faith. So there is a, I mean, Wabek has a strong bias, I must say that, in selecting ministers for people who are grounded with an understanding um, of the word of faith. Not necessarily they're coming to teach on the subject of faith, but they teach from a faith standpoint in any subject that they are touching on. In other words, you will understand that this is coming from an understanding of the word of faith as it applies into various aspects of life. And um, Dr. Andy Osako is someone God has raised in that lineage. Um, he's a graduate of Rema Bible School in Tulsa. So he, it's, whether he likes it or not, he's injected into his DNA. It's part and parcel of him. And has doing a very, I mean, the church in Abuja, there's a massive revival going on in that church. All right. Summit Bible Church, Abuja. Let us rise to our feet as welcome for his first session, Dr. Andy Osaka. Is anybody excited to be morning session Wafbeck? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's an honor to be here. I uh, don't take it for granted. Thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, yes, clap your hands. Let's appreciate him. Um, <laughs> hallelujah. I've always said that uh, Pastor Boju has an unusual grace. Not a very easy grace to understand, you know, the way he flows. But, um, I mean, five major conferences every year. That's huge. That is huge, yes. Praise the Lord. When I, when I grow up, I want to be like you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Amen. I want to appreciate Pastor Tony as well for... Once you married him, God had to grace you as well for this kind of work. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I want to recognize all the ministers in the house, all the pastors. Greetings. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And all of you, just clap for yourself. Just clap for yourselves. You're powerful. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I was supposed to bring my wife, but I didn't. 
And now you want me to explain? I won't explain. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Amen. Just before we start, let's just, um, you know, do something. And I think it's very important. This is the new year. We just started. And the Lord spoke to me and said this year is a year of supernatural health and prosperity. Do you believe that? That means there's a lot of joy. There's going to be a lot of joy in your heart. In your, in your heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is going to do good things for you. You are going to laugh. This year you will laugh. Huh? You will laugh. You will just be laughing. God will so bless you. You will just be laughing anyhow. Glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, so let's have a practice run. Because, because by the end of this conference, you will, know, you will not know how to control it. So look for three people and laugh at, laugh in their face. Come on. Come on. Ha, 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 ha. You can do seven people if you like. If they're going to laugh, laugh well. Don't give me 50% laughter. Don't give me 20%. Go 100. Hallelujah. Laugh in such a way you feel some pain here. The way you're laughing now is the way you laugh for the rest of this year. So how do you want to laugh for the rest of this year? Let, let me hear. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Ha, 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 ha. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, if all we did today was laugh, we'll be okay. Glory to Jesus Christ. I don't know some of you, I don't know what you think is going to happen when we get to heaven. Some of you are more serious than the Holy Ghost. You are more holy than the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Some of you, when it's time to pray, I think you assume that prayer doesn't go with laughter. Because when you are serious in prayer, your face will start frowning. Is somebody here with me? May your face never look like a reprint of the book of Lamentations. We want to pray, just go pray. Even the angels were moving back. Hallelujah. You will laugh. I say you will laugh. I don't care what the devil has spoken about you. It's a lie. I don't care what the news says. I don't care what pandemic says. You are going to laugh this year. Glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We open our hearts to receive from you. We thank you for speaking to each one. We receive it by faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You and your laughing selves can sit down. Hallelujah. I want to share some things that the Lord has put in my heart concerning the times in which we live. If you go with me to Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah 60 verse 1, Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise and shine, for your light has come. Arise and shine, for your light has come. Who am I talking to? Arise and shine, for your light has come. 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 Ha, ha, ha. Arise and shine, for your light has come. Arise and shine, for your light has come. Shout hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. He says, arise and shine, for your light has come. That's interesting. That means... It is possible for your light to come and you don't know it. Because he had to tell them. Their light had come and they didn't know. So one of the jobs of the prophet is to tell you what is happening in the realm of the spirit. So that you can react properly. Say amen. 
So you can be well positioned to receive what God is doing. Light has come. Even if you didn't know it, I've come to announce to you today, your light has come. Now, look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. It says, the glory of the Lord is written upon you. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth. If there's, ever, if there's ever been a dark time on the earth, it is now. All you have to do is watch the news. All you have to do is look at the trends, especially in the you know, Western world, but it's even here as well. All kinds of things are happening. Twisted behavior. Dark times have come. But I love this because even in the midst of dark times, he's telling us to arise. Which means God is not intimidated by darkness. Neither should you be intimidated by darkness. Hallelujah. Do you know your light shines brightest when it's darkest? Glory be to God. Look at the scripture. It says, behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Darkness shall cover the earth. Glory to God. Go back to verse 2. Verse 2. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at that. It says, darkness shall cover the earth. And what? Deep darkness the people. Deep darkness the people. Which means the darkness in the hearts of people is worse than the darkness on the earth. Did you see that? It is deeper. And actually, any darkness you find on the earth is the overflow from the hearts of men. Satan uses people. So people's hearts are darkened by the influence of evil spirits. And what you see manifested is just the overflow. Are you with me? So it's telling us in these dark times, there's a signal from the Lord. He says, your light has come. In other words, don't let the darkness confuse you. Don't let the darkness make you feel there's no hope anymore. He says, because there's a light. But you have to understand, you have to respond to that light. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Glory to Jesus. So let's go back to verse 1. Let me show you. Verse 1. Arise and shine, for your light has come. This word arise, very interesting. It means, it means to change your posture. It means to change your position. It is actually speaking about your mind. You have to adjust your attitude for you to appreciate this kind of light. Hallelujah. Look at what it says. Give me the amplified version, amplified. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It says, arise from where? Depression and what? Prostration. In which circumstances have kept you? It says, rise to a new life. You have to be told, because when it looks dark, someone has to come from the outside and announce it to you. Say amen, somebody. It says, change your attitude, because something is about to happen. Change your attitude from despondency to what? Expectation. Because God is about to do something fresh in your lives. 2023 will be like no other. Somebody say, this year will be my best year thus far. To arise means to believe. It means to start to believe again. I know that sometimes when people go through some difficult times, difficult seasons, they tend to drop the baton of their faith. Hallelujah. And they allow the circumstances to toss them to and fro. God is telling you it's time to go back and pick it up again. Pick up the baton of faith. Because with faith, all things are possible. In other words, pick up the baton of possibility. I don't care where your life has ended up right now. It's not the final story. There's a bigger story. Are you with me? Pick up the baton of faith. And let's go back to God. And let's believe God. Say amen, somebody. Hallelujah. And I love this. It also means to get up. Simply means to get up. Someone is sleeping. You slept too long. And the Lord comes and wakes up and says, get up. I have work for you to do. Glory to God. I'm not done with you yet. I'm not finished yet. I've got an assignment for you. There's, there are graces about you you haven't even tapped yet. Am I in the right house? The gifts embedded in your spirit, they're about to be released. Hallelujah. This week, there's going to be activation of spiritual senses. That, who could, that man who could not see, you know, you can open your eyes and see the physical and still be blind in the spiritual because your spiritual eyes need to be awakened. 
You have spiritual senses, just like you have spiritual, just like you have natural senses, you have spiritual senses. Hallelujah. Are you with me? So God is going to awaken, awaken your senses. So you start to pick up the right information from the Spirit. Say amen. Glory be to Jesus. Give me the uh, Isaiah 60 verse 1. Give me message translation. Message translation. Thank you, Lord. Get out of bed. Tell your neighbor, get out of bed. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor, something's about to happen. I don't want you to miss it. Get out of bed. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, wake up. I love this. Put your face where? In the sunlight. See, let me explain this, the process here. You know, uh, it says, arise and shine for your light has come. You cannot encounter light until you arise. You have to arise so you can encounter light. That's why light is present and you don't know it. So to encounter the light, you have to arise. Let me show you. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 13. Ephesians 5 and 13. You have to change your posture if you're going to encounter this light I'm talking about. It says, but all things that are made made exposed, that are exposed, that are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Next verse. Therefore he says, watch this, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you what? Light. You have to change your position for you to encounter this light he's talking about. Are you with me? Something else about this light. Notice how Isaiah refers to this light. He doesn't say, arise for our light has come. He says, your light has come. He's a prophet. He's not talking to his own people. He's not talking to his own dispensation. He's looking into the future. And he sees you. And he sees you. And he sees me. And he sees your face. And he's talking to you through the scriptures. He's telling you, in your generation, there will be a light present. He says that light is a signal for you to what? Arise and what? Shine. There's somebody here with me. He wasn't talking to his own people. You see, there's a spectrum of light. There's a spectrum of light. And at every point in that spectrum, you have different grades of light. So in his own time, there was light. But it wasn't the same grade as this light is talking about here. You see, in his own time, you had the light of the law. They had the law. They also had the light of the prophets. But there was a light that wasn't present yet. And that's what he saw. When God opened his eyes and looked into the future, he saw another kind of light. And he says, wow. And he began to speak to that generation. He says, arise and shine. Your light, your light, your light, it has come. Glory to God. So that when we go back and read the scriptures and read Isaiah 60 verse 1, Something should trigger on the inside to let us know he's talking to me. This light he's talking about is a light that is present right now. Someone said, my light is here. Say, this is my time. Say, this is my time. Glory to Jesus. Go with me to John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1 and verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to shine. It's time to shine. Now, what does it mean to shine? To shine means to manifest the light that you have encountered. It means to manifest and radiate the light that you have encountered. So, John chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Next verse. He was in the beginning with God. Next verse. All things were made through him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. Watch this. In him was life, and the life was what? The light. See, that's the light he was talking about. In his own time, that light had not yet come. But now, that light has come. So who's meant to arise today? Someone said me. Someone said my light has come. He says in him was life, and the life was the light of man. Watch this, next verse. And the light shines in the darkness. Which darkness? He told us. He says, gross darkness covers the earth. 
says darkness covers the earth and gross darkness to people. But it says the Lord will arise over you. It says, when you see that darkness, don't be intimidated. Just start to shine. Your time to shine has started. It's showtime. I said, it's showtime. The Bible said, let your light so shine that men may see the, your good works and give your father glory. Some of you don't want to shine because you think it's humility not to shine. No, if you shine, that's the only way God gets the glory. Because when you shine, they will see God. Where is God? They don't know where God is. God lives in you. Hallelujah. So for them to see God, they have to see you. Oh my God, am I in the right house? It says, let your light so shine that man may see your works. In other words, let people see you. Then they will come to you. Then when they come to you, you reflect them to God. That's the pattern. They don't know how, they, they don't know how to find God, but they know where to find you. Is somebody here with me. And the light of God is where? In you. So shine it. Shine it. When you shine it, you become attractive. You start to attract the nations. Hallelujah. The Gentiles shall come to your rising. They will come. As you rise, as you shine, they start coming. And when they come, they will give you glory. And when they give you glory, you take it and give it to God. That's the only way they will know, they will understand God. That's their only connection to God. You. Someone say, my time has come. So I will shine. I will shine so bright. Now watch this. Go back to the scripture. Go back. Let me. Go back. It says, and light shines in darkness. Darkness did not comprehend it. The word comprehend means to seize or contain it. Darkness can never contain light. You see what I'm saying? Once you put on the switch, you won't find the darkness anymore. Darkness disappears in the presence of light. Hallelujah. There's no wrestling bout between darkness and light. Darkness dispels light. Say amen. Matthew 4 verse 12. Matthew 4 verse 12. Somebody say my time to shine. It has come. Matthew 4 verse 12. Watch this. Now when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali. Next verse. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, watch this, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Next verse, watch this. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Wow, what happened here? All that happened was a man walked into this territory. But in the realm of the spirits, they're telling us a great light has come. They didn't know it. But in the realm of spirit, even the angels could attest to the fact, light has come. That's what Isaiah is trying to tell us. They're letting us know, listen, when you see darkness across the earth, when you see intense wickedness, don't be intimidated. Why? Your light has come. Your light is here. Put on the switch. Switch on your light. Glory to God. Don't let fear override you. Don't let, don't let satanic walks and the news intimidate you. Switch on the light. Hallelujah. And shine. Go, go with me to Matthew. Go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 17 verse 1. Matthew 17 verse 1. Hallelujah. Matthew 17 verse 1. After six days... Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. Next verse. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Next verse. Behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Now let me have, let me have four people. Please, can I have four people? I want to use you to demonstrate something. Four people. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What if he's going to play Peter? Who's Peter? I will let you choose so that you won't, you won't accuse me afterwards. So, Now, what person is going to play Jesus? Let me just tell you now. So let me start with Jesus. Who's going to play Jesus? The lady. Clap your hands. He's a good man. He's a good man. 
I was waiting for one of them that would say I'm the one. All right, so you're going to play Jesus. Is that okay? All right. So we have, um, uh, so we have Moses and who, who else? Elijah. So who's going to play Moses? Who's Moses? You, your beer beer looks like you can go. So just go. Just move that side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elijah. Ah, oh, I think both Moses and Elijah had beer beer. But no problem. So just, you want to do Elijah? You look like you have an Elijah anointed on you. Praise the Lord. All right, so you're going to play who? Peter. All right, wonderful. Uh, you know, I didn't bring, uh, I think there was, who else was there? James and John. So let's, let Peter just represent them. Because throughout this encounter, they didn't talk. <laughs> Only one person spoke. Who spoke here? Uh -huh. So let Peter represent the group. Amen. Now watch this. Go back to the scripture. Let me show you. Peter answered and said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Big error. This shows he had no understanding of what was happening. But they told us why he said it. The Bible says because he didn't know what else to say. Hallelujah. And I'll show you why that would have been an error. It says, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly, a voice came out of the cloud saying, this. Right? God is being very specific. God is selecting, oh Lord, help me. Selecting one person out of Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. God selects one. One. One of them. Which one? It says, this. Give me scriptures, please. Scriptures. It says, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Watch this. Hear him. He didn't say, hear Moses. He didn't say, hear Elijah. He says, hear him. One person. What's going on here? Now, we call this the Mount of Transfiguration, because Jesus was transfigured. But in the actual sense, it wasn't about the transfiguration. It was about a transfer. The baton of glory was being transferred from Moses, who represented the law, and Elijah, representing what? The prophets. They were transferring the baton to one person. In other words, the law and the prophet were filled in one person. Which means at that point in time, there's no need again. Because when you go to Christ, in him you have what? The law fulfilled. In him you have what? The prophets fulfilled. So there's a transition. So it should have been called the mount of what? Transfer or transition. Because God did not even acknowledge the rest. Why? That tenure was over. That's why if he had built three tabernacles, it would have been a serious error. Are you with me? The light of the law and the light of the prophets was about to be consumed in the light of Christ. What did Isaiah see in Isaiah 60 verse 1? What, did he, what light did he see? What light did he see? He saw the light of Christ. And it says, the generation that encounters the light of Christ, it says, that generation arise and shine. It's a different light. Isaiah said, listen, this light is different from what I have. We are seeing mighty works. We are seeing great advancement. But when it compares to that light, every other light is insignificant in the face of that light. He says, arise and shine. Glory to Jesus. Watch this. Go back to the scripture. Glory to Jesus. I'm going to say my time has come. You see, he says, behold, the bright cloud overshadowed them. Suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. Why did they stress hearing? Because they've been hearing all kinds of things. He says, from now on, hear this one. Next verse. Watch this. 
And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. Next verse. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, 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 arise. Do not be afraid. Look at the next verse. When they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but who? Jesus. Guys, I come to announce to you, dispensations have changed. Be careful who you are listening to. Be careful what you are listening to. There's a pure light. You see, before Jesus came, there was light, but it wasn't pure light. It was limited by the nature of the fallen man. Are you with me? But through Christ, God was able to introduce the pure light. And that pure light, when you shine it, darkness does not stand a chance. Clap your hands for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you with me? Now watch this. Go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. <laughs> Did you see that? Watch this, watch this. Has in this last day spoken to us by who? His son. Hear him. Someone say, I will hear him. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Quickly, give me, give me a, a Second Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse, verse, verse 6. 2 Corinthians 3, 6. Let me, let me hurry up. 2 Corinthians 3 and 6, quickly. Go back to verse 5. Let me start from verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but, but our sufficiency is from God. Next verse. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. I'm going to get to that soon. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses, that was a light. That light was bright, but nothing compared to this light. Are you, are you here with me? He says, looking steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance. But that glory was passing away. Next verse. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more what? Glorious. Now stop right here. Let me explain. When he said, hear him. He was talking to Jesus, right? About Jesus. But how many of you know Jesus right now is in where? He's in heaven. Am I correct? Where is Jesus right now? So how are we going to hear him today? By his spirit. In our dispensation. You see, what Jesus meant to his disciples while he walked on the earth, the Holy Spirit means to us today. Amen. He represents the ministry of Jesus, the ministry of Christ to us today. Are you understanding me? Hallelujah. Go back to that scripture. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Next verse. For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, then the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. Next verse. For even what was made glorious had no glory. In other words, compared to this glory, that one is not glory. That light is over. Say amen. amen. Because of the glory that excels. Next verse. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Hear him. Next verse. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. This is the basis of our boldness. What's the basis? The light that we have today. Are you with me? Next verse. Unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded for, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. What is the veil? Darkness. Once you turn to Christ, darkness shines. Sorry, light shines and darkness is no more. So in Christ, there's no veil. There's no what? Darkness. You can see things clearly, but you have to arise. And you have to look, put your face in the light. Hallelujah. That you may see clearly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you still here? All right, let me show you. Go, go, go quickly to... 
Go to John 16 verse 12. Hear him to us. What does hear him mean to us? It means hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. It means be led by the Spirit of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Are you still here? Glory to Jesus. John 16, 12, quickly. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Next verse. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. In other words, when he comes, you will hear him. Why? Look at this. For he will not speak on his own authority. Whatever he hears, he will speak. Who is he hearing from? Jesus, the head of the church. So hearing the Holy Ghost is the same thing as what? Hearing him. So when the Bible says hear him, it's a reference for us. It's a reference to who? The Holy Spirit. Guys, let me tell you something. You cannot succeed in your Christian life, your Christian endeavors, your assignment from God without the agency of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Not just that we are in union with him, we must also enter a partnership with him. Hallelujah. Union with him means we're joined together with him. Partnership means we walk together with him. Every major breakthrough in your life as a believer, you are going to notice there was the Holy Spirit. There was a ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had to intercept you at that time. Without the Holy Ghost, there's no Christianity. Are you still here with me? Glory to Jesus Christ. This generation, God is calling us back. It says, get back to intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Get back to the place where you and the Holy Spirit are walking together in tandem. Hallelujah. Get back to the place where you can actually say for yourself, I heard from God. Not you are looking for your, your prophets that will tell you the will of God. That, that time has passed. Oh Lord, help me somebody. Glory to Jesus Christ. Now the prophet's ministry has shifted. The prophet doesn't direct you. What does the prophet do? He confirms what the spirit on the inside tells you. As many as are led by what? The spirit. Not as many as are led by prophets. Not as many as are led by the law. Not as many as are led by angels. Help me, Lord. Help me, help me, help me. Are you still here with me? As many as are led by the spirit. Not as many as are led by open doors. Okay, let me leave this side because they're getting, they're getting angry with me here. Hallelujah. You are not to be led by opportunities. Yeah, because if, if, if you do that, Satan will set you up. And it's a wrong prayer to pray, Lord, if it's your will, open the door. If it's not, close it. What kind of chance is that? It doesn't work like that. Satan, if Satan knows you're someone who's looking for open doors to interpret the will of God, Satan will open doors for you. Oh, Lord, help me. You are not to be led by money. Pastor, you don't understand. There's that or that job there, that or that job there. They're going to pay me more. So, you don't want to miss your destiny on account of a few extra coins. Are you with me? We're led by the Spirit. And as you're led by the Spirit, that's how that light, that's how you encounter that light. That light. Let me show you. Ephesians, quickly. Ephesians. Glory to Jesus. Is somebody ready? Are you ready to be led by the Spirit? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Watch this. Once you are led by the Spirit, you have exposed yourself to light. Which light? This light that Isaiah prophesied. Isaiah, uh, Ephesians 1, 17, quickly. He's praying for the Ephesian church. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, these are, these are manifestations, or you could say, you know, facets of the anointing that are carried by the Holy Spirit. So when it says, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, it's a reference to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Manifesting in the area of wisdom and what? Revelation. Go back to scriptures. He says, when this happens, he says, I pray to God that you will encounter this, this dimension of the Holy Spirit. Because once you encounter this dimension of the Holy Spirit, something will happen. Look at the next verse. The eyes of your understanding mean what? Enlightened. Once you're exposed to this ministry of the Spirit, 
then you have exposed yourself to what? This light. This light that we need for this age before Jesus comes so we can shine it bright. Say amen, somebody. So we have to hear what the Spirit says. Go quickly with me. Go to Hebrews 3 and 7. Hebrews 3 and 7. Hebrews 3 and 7. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 3 and 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. I will explain this more later. Go to Revelation 2 verse 7. Right from the words of Jesus, right from the mouth of Jesus. Hallelujah. Watch this. He says, he who has an ear, this is Jesus, right? He's telling us, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Listen to me, guys. In terms of function, in terms of impact, the most important personality in the Trinity today for you is the Holy Ghost. He brings the reality of the Father. He brings the reality of the Son. He brings it and wraps it up and places a deposit in your spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot commune with the Father. Without the Holy Ghost, you cannot commune with the Son. You better start to respect the Holy Ghost. Tell your, whole, tell your friend, say, the Holy Ghost. Say, so you need to show him more respect. Hallelujah. And I'll talk about this more this evening. But I just want to give you a picture of the kind of life that is possible once we start to allow this light, once we start to hear him, once we allow this light to impact us. I want to show you the kind of life that is possible. Go to John 5, verse 1. John 5, verse 1. John 5, verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Watch this. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the ship gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Next verse. An angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now listen to me. Don't you think that this is limited? Don't you think so? The angel will come, stir up the water. Then out of all those people, first come. The first man that gets in there, everyone else is in trouble. This glory could only handle one person. And then they have to wait for a season for it to be refilled. Then the angel will come back. Angel. But Jesus was present with another light. And it was about to what? Release that light for another generation. Are you with me? Watch this. Now a certain man was there who had been who had had an infirmity of 38 years. Next verse. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Simple question. But when you're in the darkness, confusion comes. When you spend too much time in the darkness, it's difficult to relate to new possibilities. Look at this. Next verse. What did they ask him? Help me. What did they ask him? Is that a yes or no question? It's yes now, Abi. Either you say yes or you say no. Abi, watch this. It says, the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. I didn't ask you about the pool. I'm about to introduce another dimension. You are going back to the pool because you're used to it. May tradition not hold you back in this generation, in this dispensation. May you not be deceived into looking back all the time when God has something fresh and something new right in front of you. Watch this. I have no man to put me into the pool 
when the water stayed up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. He's bitter. He's angry that nobody wants to help him. His own condition affects his legs. There are people there who have sickness, but their legs can walk. So he's feeling cheated. You know, even the sick can feel cheated among the sick. Come on, come on, give me scripture, come on. He says, while, go back there, let me finish that, let me finish that. Let me finish. Verse 7. He says, while I'm coming, another steps down before me. He's not happy. He's been experiencing this kind of condition for a long time. And when he wants to move, somebody else moves quickly. Because that was a limited light. Scripture, please. Next verse. Jesus said to him, rise. Tell your neighbor, arise. arise. Tell somebody else, arise. arise. Rise, take up your bed and walk. There's something I've said about this light. It requires that you take responsibility. It's a partnership between you and the Holy Spirit. He's the paraclete, which means he will not do it for you. He will come and do what? Help you. That means that in this dispensation, believers need to be taught how to take responsibility. There was an error with a certain kind of grace message that made people feel all I have to do is just lie down and be waiting for God. And anything I do is called work of the flesh. No. There's a difference between the work of the flesh and the work of faith. Are you with me? If you lie down and do nothing, you will be poor, I prophesy. When others are rising, you remain in failure, I prophesy. Arise! Think about it. Arise means the action is now. If God could arise for you, he won't command you to arise. That means God cannot arise for me. That means I'm the one who's going to arise. Something else I've learned. God cannot shine for me. He says, arise and shine. All he does is what? He brings light. My light has come. So what, what do you do? Arise. What next? Shine. Manifest it. Do the works of faith. Step out in faith. Why is it unbelievers are more aggressive? Why? Why do we have more conviction about, about moving forward than believers? Why is it when we pray, we go and sleep? Don't you know after you pray, you go out, go to the marketplace, go out after prayer. Prayer is to equip you so that when you go out, favor will meet you there. This is a season to get up. This is a season to walk. It's time to walk. It's time to walk. Hallelujah. Grace came for a reason. What did Paul say? He says, I'm the least of all the apostles. Yeah, it says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Did you see that? How did he become what he is? He walked. He labored. Grace is for you to labor. Grace is what? Empowerment. When grace comes, then you can walk. If grace comes and you sleep, then you have treated the grace of God in vain. Somebody say, my time has come. Say, my time has come. Glory to Jesus. Now look at this. Look at the next verse quickly. It says, immediately, the man was made well. Wow. Took up his bed and walked. And that day was what? Sabbath. Problem. Because this is not the law. This light is not law light. Go back, go back. Watch this. It says, and that it was Sabbath. Problem. Next verse. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured? It is a Sabbath. You see how people are? Somebody just got healed. Your problem is what? Law. It says, it is a Sabbath. It's not lawful for you to carry your bed. What? In other words, it's not lawful for me to take responsibility. No. Next verse. 
He answered them. He says, he who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk now. What do you expect me to do? You see his reasoning here. He said, in other words, what's your problem? Somebody made me well and told me to walk. And I'm doing what? I'm just being obedient. <laughs> Woo! Glory to Jesus. When the Holy Ghost speaks to you, some people will antagonize it. Religious spirits will try to block you. Be careful. Next verse. Look at it. Go back. Go back to that scripture. Take up your bed and walk. He told me. Next verse. They asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? He didn't even know. Next verse. But the one who was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had withdrawn. A multitude had been in that place. Next verse. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said, See, you have been made well. See no more. Lest, lest a washing come upon you. Next verse. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. Hallelujah. He began to broadcast it. He began to preach it. He began to give God the glory. Now watch this. This light began to shine, right? Then Jesus went through his redemptive work to ensure that the light he had will be made available for anyone who believes in him. He didn't just bring light so he'll be the only one shining. He brought light so that he will shine and you will shine. Jesus brought light for you to shine. And if you don't shine, you have insulted the grace of God. Watch this. Acts 9, my last scripture. Acts 9 verse 32. Acts 9 verse 32. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I prophesy. I prophesy. Within the next 30 days, doors are being opened for you. Unusual doors are being opened for you. When the doors are open, you will know by the Spirit. You will have a witness by the Spirit. The Lord says, when I open the door, move in. Move in. Put your best foot forward. Give it your best. This year will be set. God is going to set this year, the rest of this year, in the month of January. I wish I had a witness in this house. Look at it. Acts 9, verse 32. Just to show you that when he was shining that light, his, his disciples began to watch him. And when he went through the cross and went to the grave and went to hell and resurrected and defeated the enemy, he brought the light and distributed the light. That's why he's called the father of lights. Not one light. Because you are a light. You are a light. You are a light. Each one of us is a light. And is a father of what? Lights. Are you with me? Watch this. I said, I said, um, what did I say? Acts. It came to pass as Peter went through all parts of the country. He also came to the saints who dwelt at Lida. I love this. He found a certain man named Aeneas who had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, watch this, Jesus the Christ heals you. Arise. Look at this. Make your bed. Have you noticed there's always an instruction that has to do with what? Responsibility. Why should he make his bed? Why? Because Peter wants the man to get back to the place of what? Responsibility. Sometimes when you go through darkness a lot, you get lazy. Are you with me? So that when the light comes, you are still in that mode. You don't realize when light comes, it's time for action. It's time for activity. He says, make your bed. Look at that. Then he arose what? Immediately and did what? He made his bed. This is not, this is a different light. Huh? This is not waiting for the angel to come once in a season. Things have changed. But you have to know things have changed. It will be easier. It will be easier for you. One time I used to pray, you know, for people. And, you know, I would get so tired. I would get, you know, you know, too much counseling. Sometimes counseling, too much counseling is a result of absence of light. And it can destroy the preacher. So I was having a meeting. 
and I wanted to pray for people. And sometimes God would direct you to pray for them one on one. I understand that. But in this case, I was tired. And the Lord said to me, bring out a chair and put in front of them. Sit on that chair. Get up. Tell them. Give them instruction. Tell them, if anybody sits on this chair, you shall be healed today. They looked at me. I said, if anyone sits on this chair today, you are healed. They started coming. I was as shocked as they were shocked. <laughs> but you have to control yourself because you are the man of God. <laughs> I saw people falling out of the chair. Chair. Afterwards, I went to God and began to ask him some questions. I said, Lord, what's going on here? The Lord says, in this present dispensation, a lot of authority has been transferred to you. He says, we're waiting for him too much. He says, if you open your mouth and give an instruction, the angels will back it. Do you see what I'm saying? So I understood and I said, okay, that's it. It's a different light. You see, this light is not the law light. It's not the prophet light. You can't be looking for prophet again, no. You can't. You will miss road. No. The Holy Ghost is in you. It will guide you. Now listen, we're going to do something now. I don't have time for testimonies, but if you have any sickness in your body, stand up quickly. Especially if you have pain. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I'm going to give you an instruction. Amen. As you do the instruction, the angels of God are here now. As you do the instruction, they will meet you. Because it's an, it's, you, you, you obey what I'm going to say now is an action of faith. Are you with me? Are you ready? Can you jump? Do you have enough energy to jump? Are you sure? All right. At the count of three, you are going to jump seven times. When you finish jumping seven times, you start giving God praise. Are you with me? Hallelujah. If you can't jump well, use one leg. But do something. Are you ready? Are you sure? Angels are waiting, though. Angels are waiting. Once you obey the instruction, something will shift for you. Are you ready? The pain will disappear. Miracles have been released already. Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, three, jump seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Give him praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you had pain in your body, begin to check your body now. Begin to check your body. Is either gone completely or reduced? Begin to check your body. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. How many of you want a financial miracle this year, at least this year? How many of you want it? I'm about to go down now. How many of you want it? Stand up. I know this one, you will jump more than the other one. I know you. I understand you people. Hallelujah. There's going to be a release of miracles all over this place right now. Did you hear what I said? Angels have come here. Breakthrough angels are here. Are you ready? Are you ready? At the count of three, I'm going to jump eight times. And as you're jumping, you'll be shouting. Is somebody here with me? Are you ready? Do you believe it? If you believe it, it'll work for you. One, two, three, go! Go!